Hey everybody, thanks for checking out this video. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is the latest installment of my horror movie superlative series. I am collaborating with my good friend Carlin, where we pick out our horror movie superlatives for each year. And this week we're discussing 1974. I do hope that you'll consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already on both of our channels. I have my Nails in a Coffin series, which comes out every Friday, which is a lot of fun. I'll have a link up there for you to check it out. And Carlin has a great channel as well. If you haven't subscribed already, he puts out really great in-depth um, movie reviews, about three a week. So definitely go check them out. So after you watch my video here, please go to Carlin's channel. I'll have a link in the description and watch his video with the same title as this one. Then go to the community tab on his page and vote for who you thought had the better selections. Whether those selections most closely resembled your own or whoever had the best justification. It doesn't matter. Just please watch both videos first before you vote and we both really appreciate it. Well, that's about it. That's, how about we get down to it and let's pick out some horror movie superlatives for 1974. My selection for the most amazing horror movie to come out in 1974 goes to... Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, what really hasn't been said about this movie? Now, granted, it's not that gory, but yet its, it's reputation would lead you to believe it's one of the goriest movies ever made. Um, if you haven't heard about this movie, I don't know why you're watching this video, but um, I'm sure you have. I mean, this movie spawned many sequels, reboots, remakes, but none of them could ever touch the original. I will say that the Sawyer family... That's the part that's terrifying. Not so much Leatherface. It's Leatherface and the Sawyer family that makes this film so terrifying. It's the family that's memorable. Um, it's about a group of five youths on their way through Texas and they encounter a cannibalistic family of psychos. There's not much else to say about this movie because I'm sure you all know about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's an excellent movie. Uh, Marilyn Burns' performance as Sally is outstanding. In the dinner scene, she legit looks terrified the camera work is excellent with the close-ups on her eyes i mean this is toby hooper's you know one of his greatest films it's great filmmaking it still holds up to this day it's a classic for a reason and it always will be a classic because not only do i feel that texas chainsaw massacre is the most amazing horror movie to come out in 1974 it's one of the most amazing horror movies to come out in all time probably on a lot of people's top 10 list. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre has the legacy for a reason and it was an easy selection for my most amazing pick for 1974. And my selection for this so bad it's good film goes to Blood for Dracula. It's an Andy Warhol directed Dracula movie starring Udo Kier as Dracula. I'm sold. Udo Kier puts his all into um, this performance and you could tell he was having a blast with this role. He was over the top as Dracula in the best way possible. The acting is bad in this movie, but it surely is fun to watch. If um, you haven't seen this movie or never even heard of it, it's about Kent Dracula who arrives in Italy to feast upon virgins, only to find out some difficulties there due to the fact there's a lack of virgins in Italy. His reaction to drinking horse blood is really funny, and when I was watching this movie, I had a smile on my face the entire time. I was about 20 minutes into this movie, and I thought, yep, this is my so bad it's good selection for 1974. Andy Warhol, Dracula movie, excellent choice, so bad it's good, check it out. And my selection for the most WTF movie goes to It's Alive, written, produced, and directed by Larry Cohen. It's about a couple whose infant child turns out to be a vicious killing mutant. You got effects by Rick Baker. This movie was designed to be a WTF movie, and that's why it's such a wild movie that's a ton of fun. So as soon as this baby is born, it starts to kill every medical person in the room, and then escapes on its own. WTF? <laughs> then you have people hunting the baby with deadly force, and one of the reasons I like this movie and why I think it's WTF is because of that. You got police officers and people hunting a baby with deadly force. Larry Cohen took one of the most innocent, non-threatening things in the world, a baby, and he turned it into a vicious monster. I don't want to give away too much more about this movie in case you haven't watched it yet, and I don't want to spoil anything. Larry Cohen was an excellent writer, producer, and director. He will be missed, and It's Alive is a great film and has a whole lot of WTF. 
my selection for best gore, I'm going to select Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, also known as The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. If you haven't heard of this movie, it's about a cop that's chasing two his hippies uh, suspected of a series of Manson family-like murders. And little does he know, the real culprits are the living dead who were brought back to life with the hunger for human flesh by an ultrasonic radiation being used for pest control. Pretty wild. But um, it's a zombie movie, really good gore effects. You do have some good disembowelment scenes. And there's one scene um, of a woman being attacked that I probably can't mention because of YouTube reasons. But if you've seen it, you probably know what I'm talking about. Totally worth checking out this movie. Um, when I was watching it, um, I could see how this movie probably inspired other zombie movies such as Dawn of the Dead and 28 Days Later. And like we said with the rules for this series, Carl and I can only select movies that we've actually watched to pick for these categories. I haven't seen a lot for 1974, but when comparing all the movies I've seen for this year, this is the movie that really stood out to me for having some of the best gore. So check out Let Sleeping Corpses Lie for some of the best gore you'll see in 1974. My selection for the most unique movie goes to a favorite movie of mine, Young Frankenstein. It's a Mel Brooks film is starring Gene Wilder as Dr. Frederick Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. Sorry. Um, he is Victor Frankenstein's grandson. I get a lot of enjoyment out of this movie. Uh, I selected it as unique since it was a great blend of comedy and horror. It's not scary, but damn, it is a fun movie. Um, it's an early example of a horror comedy that still holds up to this day. The jokes are still funny. And I think um, Mel Brooks shooting the movie in black and white was an excellent idea. It really added to the atmosphere of the movie. The performances are fantastic. Gene Wilder is excellent. The jokes are funny. And if you like other Mel Brooks films, you've heard of this film, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. And comparing it to all the other movies I've watched that came out in 1974, totally stood out to me as unique and my selection for the most unique movie of that year. My selection for most overrated goes to Vampires. It's a lesbian vampire movie, and I really think it's just tedious, really slow-paced. There's no real story there. The dialogue is dull, and there really is not much style to this film. It's pretty much just nudity, lesbian vampires, and but that's not enough to actually make it a good movie. I think they put that stuff in there to try and get people to see it, but without that stuff, it's really not that good at all, even with that stuff in it. It's really not that entertaining. It's just kind of like, a, you know, let's do something to easily get views for this movie. Um, if you just want to see naked uh, women and lesbians and that's it, maybe you'll enjoy this. But there's not much else there as far as story, plot, and, you know, character development goes. There's no real substance to this movie. And there's really not much else I really have to say about it. It's just a really overrated movie and that's why I selected it for this and finally, my selection for the most underrated horror movie goes to Black Christmas. I wish this movie was as well known as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Billy, terrifying killer. His phone calls to the sorority house are very unsettling and creepy. And you never fully see what Billy looks like or know what his full motivation is. It's only hinted at. But it is pretty obvious that he hates women, but we really don't know why yet. And like I said, this is one of the best slashers ever made. I've watched this movie a few times a year, and especially at Christmas time. And I fall in love with Olivia Hussey every time I watch this movie. It's one of my favorite performances in horror. The way she looks when she's terrified is just fantastic. It's some of the subtle things that she does as well. Like when she's on the phone with Billy, and she's really freaked out and upset, you see her eyes dart back and forth really fast. And that little touch adds so much to the scene. I know I picked this as most underrated, but I do like it better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But I had to select it for underrated since I don't think enough people know about this movie and how excellent it is. It's a great slasher, a great holiday slasher, great film altogether. One of the most underrated movies ever made. And it's probably a contention for my most underrated movie to come out in the decade of the 70s. Going to go to Bob Clark's Black Christmas. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all my picks. Here's a quick summary. Most amazing, Toby Hooper's 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So bad it's good. Andy Warhol's Blood for Dracula. Most WTF movie, Larry Cohen, It's Alive. Best score, pretty good zombie flick, Let Zeeping uh, Corpses Lie. Most unique, you got Mel Brooks and Young Frankenstein. Most overrated, nothing really much here with this movie, Vampires. And most underrated, a phenomenal movie, Black Christmas. Thanks again for watching this video. Now, please go to Carl's channel, link in the description. Watch his video with the same name, and then go to the community tab on his channel and vote for who you thought had the better picks. Also, let me know in the comments section down below what your picks are. I love reading those. It's some of my favorite part of doing this series. Also, if you haven't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss a video, and also check out my Nails in a Coffin series. And subscribe to uh, Carnal's channel as well. He puts awesome movie reviews out every week. We both really appreciate it. Well, that's a bit, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I appreciate you guys checking this out. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay happy. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. And remember, with great kills, there must also come great nails.